Welcome back to the Cavecast, everybody, the uncensored show for nerds of all kinds. And if this is your first time checking us out, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell. And also for the Heeries, if you're listening to us on Spotify or any other way of podcast format, we encourage you to follow us in whatever way that place makes you follow things. <laughs> Just so you guys know what's happened this past week, a lot of things have happened this past week. Um, we were uh, both sick for a few days. Um, not COVID. I got a test and it said so. Yep. Um, it's just so, but uh, it does involve coughing. So if at random points, if you see us turn it's, away from the mic, it's uh, like uh, we're mute it and, you know, take care of your ears. So no it's ear It's kind of a happen. like weird allergy kind of flu that happened. It, it, we, we both yeah. kind of thought that's what it was and yeah, it wasn't, but it was weird. So yeah, for, fortunately, but yeah. uh so yeah, we're 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 better now. It was a couple days worth, but that was it. And uh, thankfully, it was just a regular cold. <laughs> Isn't it so funny? Where it's like now, like anytime anybody like coughs or anything, they're like, "Oh just, my god!" It's like, dude, like I've been coughing for years before yeah. COVID was ever around. You know, and it's because uh, so, I, I remember uh, Hugo Martin saying it when he uh, went to go for a podcast at one point. He's like, "Dude, I cleared my throat at the airport," and he's like, "People looked at me like I was like evil." Yeah. You know, so he's yeah. like, it's just he's like, I literally was just clearing my throat. <laughs> yeah, people, so, people but, get people get weird about it, but yeah, so now that's. <laughs> Yeah, but he's right. That's why if anything does seem like it's it's not what it seems like. So we could, we could uh, you know, just, we have a little bit more grittier voices this week and, you know, all that <laughs> stuff. So uh, it's kind of fun. I've heard that uh, it's a good hit with the ladies. They like the sleepy voice. So, you know, mm -hmm. who knows? Um, but uh, this week we're going to dive into something that 100 percent needs to be talked about. One person in particular, we're going to do an episode on later. So you should subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss it because it's going to be a damn good episode. Yeah. I would not say that if I did not mean it. And I do. Uh, <laughs> so, um, however, this one is more of the broad spectrum. Uh, this is many different uh, people that are on this list and it's the good guys of Hollywood. Now mm -hmm. let's, let's face something right now. Hollywood is corrupt. No matter what, yeah, what theories you believe, there's or actually don't a believe. few actors that we're leaving off of this list. We won't name names, yep. but yeah, there are some on there. If you go and check this list out, yep, it's you're gonna go, whoa, they did. Nah, there's reasons, guys. So yeah, yeah, it's just, it's one of those where it's like I know that uh, if we include certain people, it's not even just people on this list. It's kind of like getting a conspiracy theorist to you know not go deep on like you know aliens, you know where it's like yeah. it just it's that type of thing, you know. But um, there's the list that that is present, there are a lot of good ones on here, and there is a lot of good people in Hollywood, but there's a it, shitload of corrupt ones. And now it's now the thing is too is that you know corrupt. I think that there's there's many different levels to it where oh, it's yeah. like sometimes you just have people that are they're not really involved with anything like sketchy. They're just they're assholes. You know yeah. they're just they're just not nice people. I think um, that e either way, but yeah, either way it is a. I mean, I, I've I've heard many things about celebrities that not that they're assholes, but I've heard, I've heard things like, you know, like Justin Timberlake's a shitty tipper and, oh, yeah. you know, so I mean like, like things like that, like he's not, he's not a dick. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a dick move. Yeah. So, but I, at the, at the same time too, I, you know, I, here's another uh, aspect of it is that, you know, they didn't always have money. Mm -hmm. So I dated somebody whose parents were very wealthy and, he drank Milwaukee's best. Like the dude could have <laughs> yeah. bought half of Anheuser Busch. Didn't care. Didn't care. And he that's what he told me. He said, "Piss is piss." And I didn't always have money. This is what I drank in school. Right. You know. So the, it it was one of those things. It, it's just it's funny because people people are like that. So when I hear things like that about celebrities, especially, it's like, yeah, they might have a bunch of money now, but it's probably just form of habit. They mm -hmm. didn't. But either way, either way, there well, there are there are different levels of like you said, being an asshole, corrupt, all of these things. So hopefully, we get a lot of the true good ones tonight. Well, um, starting off with this one, um, this one, this guy in particular, um, I really don't have a thought about him one way or the other. Um, you know, okay. I know that uh, he's had his heartthrob uh, roles, excuse me, and he's you know very good at what he does. Um, in fact, uh, 
one of the most interesting films I've ever watched. Actually, uh, he was the main character and I was kind of kicking and screaming going into watching the movie. And I was just like, oh, come on. And it ended up being violent and just like intense. Brad and Pitt? No. Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Okay. Ryan Gosling is the first one we're covering tonight. Um, this says, um, and, uh, uh, by the way, the link is in the description if you guys want to follow along. Um, it's at livingly.com. Uh, this says Ryan Gosling is a super sweet guy. He loves his mom and takes her to a, a bulk of his award shows. Okay. Um, he is an awesome dad to his two daughters and just radiates good guy Canadian politeness. <laughs> <laughs> the man goes the extra mile as evidenced by his 2016 audition for The Nice Guys. In the movie, Gosling plays a private investigator who has a young daughter named Holly. When Gosling showed up to the Holly auditions, he made it a point to learn the background of each young girl that was throwing their hat into the ring. He wanted to make them feel special, especially since auditions usually jump actors who look and act like each other. Uh, well, I'm sorry. You usually look and act like each other uh, together. It was really wonderful. Sorry, quote. It was really wonderful because uh, he showed up and he actually knew about each of these kids, quote, uh, end quote, said the director, Shane Black. He knew what they'd done and some of their history. He'd actually taken the time to get to know the kids he was auditioning with. I thought that was pretty uh, remarkable. Hmm. If you need more proof that Gosling is one of the sweetest guys in the movie business, he also loves taking his mom to the Oscars so she could swoon over her favorite stars. <laughs> one time he recalled on the Graham Norton show, uh, then she had her hair done up in a beehive and then felt like it was too old fashioned when she got to the red carpet. Not wanting his mom to feel sad, he discreetly asked Meryl Streep, who he didn't know, to uh, compliment it, and she did. His mom felt like a million bucks afterwards. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, crazy. That's awesome. So Ryan Gosling, um, now the movie I was talking about is um, Drive. It's, okay. Yeah. So I, I actually, every time I tried to illegally watch it, um, <laughs> it would get it It's would a one-timer, but yeah. It, it would get fucked up like like a third of the way through. Like I really only made it past kind of the beginning, mm -hmm. if you will, like with that weird fucking like crash through the house and like, dude, this movie goes from zero to screwed up in yeah. like three seconds. We You're were, like, whoa. Like, yeah. We were like, <laughs> Oh, we got to watch this. And then I never got a chance to, but right. um, I heard it was really good. I don't know if he's on this list or not, but with what you, with what you were saying about the awards, um, I always found it very interesting that <clears throat> Zach Galifianakis, oh, yeah. when uh, when he first uh, came to like Hollywood and stuff and and moved to like LA and whatnot, he lived in like some apartment complex and he befriended this like seventy five or eighty year old woman at the laundromat like while he was going on his uprise in his career like. Becoming oh, okay. famous through like his standups and then eventually like his movie career. And um, even after he moved, he kept in touch with her and took her to every red carpet event that he had. See, that's because that was that's awesome. Yeah. Like that was that was his date. And because she was basically the one in the laundromat, I think he, he said she even like read lines with him <laughs> at, for certain things or would tell him <laughs> if something so cool. was funny. Right. So it was really, it was really nice to be like, he could have done or taken probably whoever he wanted, but he took this woman that was truly in his corner the entire time. So that, that was really yeah. cool. That's, so that's kind of what that reminded me of with asking Meryl Streep to like, um, when she didn't even know her, but yeah, like yeah, that's, that's really cool. That's really cool. I just, it's, it's so crazy to me whenever you, you know, cause like I know for a fact that if I was going to something um, that like, you know, if I was going to take mom, like, you know, be like, she's going to be my date. Like, it's like, you know, Hey, like I'm yeah. going to take you to something. Like if I ever had the opportunity to, like, if I knew for a fact that she would get to meet, you know, Liam Neeson or yeah. like something like that, right. I'm like, you're coming. I'm like, you're going to get yeah. to meet everyone. And like, you're going to have dinner with us. It, it would it be hard. Be great. It would be hard to pick between her and aunt Heidi. I know we talk about her a lot, yeah. but because yeah. I mean, they, they are a huge impact on our kind of 
acting and actors that we follow, I guess you should say. Yeah. That's so that, that, that is, that is kind of a unique thing to think about, but well, it's like, who just, would you take? Yeah. Well, it's, it's just cool that Gosling is just like, no man, I'm taking my mom, dude. Like we're going to go do yeah. this and then we're going to go hit steaks afterwards like, yeah. and go like, have a good night and go back to the hotel and just do like, just, just normal be, shit. Like, it just, yeah. It, it just, it is what it is, it's man. It's so you crazy know? So, that people, people, uh, um, don't look at it that way. It's like, I mean, like he's just a regular person. He goes we all back, are. He goes back to the hotel room and, you know, takes a shower and goes to bed because it's late, just like anybody <laughs> else would. It's like, you kidding me? It's 12. I got to get some yeah. sleep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, right along with this, uh, no shocker that uh, this wonderful gentleman is on this list, Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Um, Keanu Reeves probably will end up getting his own episode, but this is a, um, which he's not the person I was talking about in the beginning. Again, subscribe that way you don't miss it. Um, but uh, Keanu Reeves uh, is well known for being the internet's boyfriend, for being the good guy of Hollywood, for being yep. down to earth and, you know, just everything about him. So I'm curious to see what Living Lee has to say. And then we're, uh, we're going to be able to talk about Keanu Reeves for at least a second. So right. he's, he's just, he's awesome. So um, it says Keanu Reeves is too good for this world and his fans can't stop singing the man's praises. He is constantly in the news for his random acts of kindness, whether that's giving up his seat on a subway ride or donating huge chunks of money to a children's hospital. When filming The Matrix, the, the actor happily took, an, uh, as we've talked about before, happily took a significant pay cut in order to afford the special effects team and costumes. Mm -hmm. There wasn't enough funding to finish the story, so he sacrificed some of his own earnings to make uh, sure the project was wrapped. As for moments with fans, there are hundreds of times that Reeves went out of his way to make his fans happy. One viral story was that Reeves bought an ice cream cone just so he could sign a receipt for an adoring fan. He has also been <laughs> quietly donating millions of dollars to children's hospitals per year for a heartwarming reason. Quote, I have a private foundation that's been running for five or six years, and it helps a couple of children's hospitals and cancer research. Keanu told uh, Ladies Home Journal in 2009. Quote, I don't like to attach my name to it. I just let the foundation do what it does. End quote. His sister, Kim, was diagnosed with leukemia in the 1990s, and after treatment in a children's hospital, her cancer went into remission. He wanted to pay it forward and help other families in the same way he was helped. Yeah. Uh, is the tip of the iceberg with this man. Like, it just, oh. You know, it's, it, it's funny because <laughs> people people can say that, you know, a, a, lot, a lot of celebrities um, donate to charities. It's great. But it's also a major tax write-off. It, it is. It is. That is not. That is not why Keanu. Again, he he does it anonymously. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't know. Do you get that back if you're? I don't know how that works. But regardless, well, re regardless, well, what I can tell you is that. Um, okay, so I'm do, I'm doing this in a way that's not going to for it to come out the way that it's going to sound. <laughs> um. I donated a lot of my money for a good majority of my life. You know the reason why. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was just something that it was just, it was 10% of whatever I made. Right. Um, and I did it every week and did the math to where like I wasn't killing myself, but I yeah. knew that like this, like 10%, this is not mine. And what's interesting is my uh, spiritual leader at the time came to me and said, Hey, have you done your tax forms? And I said, no, like I've, I've, I've never, he's, he's like, so you've never allocated anything that you've donated. And I said, no. And he said, give me your form. <laughs> and he did it. And he's like, it's probably going to be like 27 bucks, but he's like, but still, still. He, but he's like, just understand. He's like that. It's okay to do that. Like it's, it's, it's okay. Right. Um, with that being said, I understand that Keanu Reeves' net worth of probably what he would make off of that would be incredibly more than what I would have with the amount <laughs> yeah. that I was don donating that was just 10%. I am very much in the camp of believing that Reeves doesn't care. 
He doesn't. It's, he if he makes some money, he probably will do like cool. Then that's more charity money. That, you know, well, that's or, what or I mean. Like, the, like I, I just but, don't know if you got it being anonymous, but he, he probably still does. Yeah, that's the thing is that's not why he's doing it. Right. It's that is probably what he does. He probably takes it and then adds it to the pile of what he's going to donate. I don't know. Don't know the man personally, but. Right. That just seems like something he would do. I know I read a Reddit post one day where he was on um, Ask Me Anything, and mm. there was the one guy said, sorry, this wasn't a question, just a statement. And he was just like basically went through his, his spiel and something along the lines of this guy had broke down in his his like dirt bike or something like that. And it like needed gas or something like that. And he was walking while he was cutting through neighborhoods and he hopped a fence and was just trying to be discreet about it and walk through. And Keanu Reeves was working on one of his cars in his garage. Oh, and he was like, Hey, are you? And he's like, my bad dude. He's like, I'm just trying to get to. And he's like, apologize to the man because his hands were dirty. So he didn't shake his hand. Gave him like fifty bucks for fare to get to, to to um get to the gas station and be able to fill up the tank and gave him like a it like went through this whole thing and Keanu was like I do remember that and wow. you know and it was just one of those things where the guy was like just thank you and it's things like that that I know that he does and has always done because I believe the the dude was saying it was sort of kind of like earlier in his career, like not quite Bill and Ted, but not necessarily like the Matrix 3. So it was right, kind right. of like an in-between all like that. People knew who Keanu Reeves was, but they didn't know yeah, who the nice yeah, guy Keanu yeah. Reeves was at that point. You know, right? and, and you always see those photos of like him on the subway where, where he's standing, that he's not taking up a seat, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. But yeah, we could... We could go on forever about him. It's yeah. it's really refreshing that there is somebody of his stature that is a superstar. He he really is. There's not many things that dude has been in front of or script that has tanked. The only thing that I know for a fact that um, I think he has vocalized regretting and it's, I'm not knocking him for it because I clearly have done work that I am not proud of, <laughs> you know? So uh, whether it was personal or if it was professional or whatever, everybody has something. Um, Dracula, because he, he did like a British accent, like, and it was just, it was corny. It was, it didn't, it didn't jive well. It's laughable. Like I, every scene I've watched of him in it, uh, it was, uh, Bram Stoker's, uh, Dracula, yeah. uh, where Gary Oldman played, uh, the vampire. Um, but, uh, it was just, it was so interesting where it's like, yeah, like I've even the Eli Roth movie that he was in where he, uh, was held captive by two girls and like they torture him. Haven't and seen like, it yet. It's I've not watched all of it. I've watched enough of it and I can just tell that Keanu Reeves just had fun. Like it was, it yeah. was, he didn't take himself seriously. Like the very ending of the movie, if you don't laugh at it, you don't have a soul. Like it just like, you just <laughs> don't. Um, but he is also the type of guy that um, I can't remember the movie that it was, but uh, he played um, and we've seen this like on Big Bang a lot is that uh, there are actors that will play a fictionalized version of themselves. Yeah. And there was one where he played a douchebag and it was so <laughs> good, dude. It was so good. Like he was like a womanizing bisexual like opposite. horn dog like it was it was yeah. so great it well was you know just, like <laughs> he doesn't even like so good. he doesn't even like touch um oh yeah he's not getting me too yeah he doesn't soon. touch like, no. people like with with the photos if you ever notice his uh, yeah his hand is like a, a three or four inches away from like their back so but it still looks like his arms around them yeah <clears throat> what dude I mean, it's crazy like you've got to i mean think about this <clears throat> keanu reeves is a very good looking dude who is famous. He yeah. can use that to his advantage and he doesn't. And he, he doesn't. And it's just like, that's like, even like when we talked yeah. about it the other night, like when he was, you know, shooting targets and stuff, you know, for like John Wick, when he was training and doing like all that gun stuff, he does like he has learned all of it. Not only did he hit all of the targets, he is surrounded by 
gorgeous women that are applauding him and he still is holding his gun and it's just like I shot them out of order. I'm sorry. Like it's yeah. like <laughs> you shot them out of order and you like bro. Like it's like it's it's just he is he's, that he's that humble. Yeah, I was, like, I, that's it's, a, it's literally just, the word I was going to say. He's one of the probably most humble individuals of Hollywood. So who 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 do we got next? We we could well, go on we could go on yeah. all day about Mr. Reeves, but well, you're about to go on for a little bit about this one because, ladies and gentlemen, we have a man here who is the super fan, 100 percent of The Office, and the next Hollywood nice John guy Krasinski. we have, not yet, Steve Carell. Okay, I figured it was one of the okay. <laughs> Uh, okay. Steve Carell is dubbed one of the nicest guys in Hollywood and for good reason. During a 2012 interview with the with uh, the Hollywood Reporter, Carell said he didn't like how cynical comedy became over the last couple of years. He thinks it's way too mean. Quote, it's not like I want to put sunshine and lollipops into the world, uh, he said, but I do believe there's been a turn toward an uh, uber cynical point of view and it's borderline mean, end quote. In that same interview, he also revealed uh, he still stayed in close contact with Jon Stewart, who gave him his big break on The Daily Show, and his former Second City pal, Stephen Colbert. Mm. But he stays in touch with them, not because of their fame, but because of their hearts. When we were, uh, sorry, quote, when we were working in Second City, one of uh, one of the staff members left and we had a tribute to him, Corral, uh, Corral said. I remember Stephen went on stage and sang a song, and it was so moving and beautiful and uh, poignant. He's supremely intelligent, but he also has an enormous heart, end quote. Along with being a sweet friend, Carell also loves being a family man. He has two kids, a daughter, and a son, and completely fawns over them. For example, excuse me, he used to go on, quote, dates with his daughter when she was little. Quote, we went to lunch. We went out to a movie, Carell told, made for mums. And what really got me sort of melted my heart that day was when she still enjoys holding my hand in public. We still do it. Huh. So just. I wonder how old they are. Don't know. Uh, hmm. It's just Steve Carell. I know from the number one, like hilarious person. Like, yeah. Take the office out of it. Watching him do stuff for over the hedge in promotion and then him playing the little squirrel and like, like, dude, it's, it's, it is amazing what this man can do. He, and it's, it's just, it's, he is so funny, but you know way more about <laughs> Steve Carell. I'm I mean, curious I, to see what you, what, like, as far as like the history with the office and everything. So yeah, what do you think? I, I guess the, the office is a, a show that is, if, if you don't like it, it's be, you. You if you don't like it, you do not like it, mm -hmm. like at all. And I stayed away from it for a long time. Didn't get what it was. I was very um, turned off by it. Mm -hmm. But I am a big fan of dry humor, things of that nature. And once I saw an episode, I was hooked. Now, Steve Carell. Not that, see, his character, you can't really base that off of. I know that his parents refused to, like, watch him for a few years. or oh, like because in general, it was so, like, different from him? They're like, that yeah. is not our son. <laughs> yeah. Because he's just so cringeworthy. Yeah. But, like, when we were talking to Brent, when he does, you know, Craig Ree Benson, things like that, it takes a, it takes a special a special uh, person to be able to pull off and act like that, mm -hmm. to be cringeworthy, do it right. And it'd be funny. Now I've heard other things about Steve that it was, you know, all throughout his career, kind of like, you know, Keanu Reeves, like just very giving, very polite. Um, you just, you don't see that through the office. He shines through that way. Sometimes most of the time, Michael Scott is just a cringeworthy douchebag. And and not right. douchebag's a harsh word, but it's because he doesn't even understand that it's that big of a deal. Yeah, like it's, and yeah. he does kind of have too big of a heart. I know that's kind of contradicting, but it's so weird to like see him out of that character. Mm -hmm. So to know that he truly is one of the good guys of Hollywood is very. Uh, it's very relieving mm. to know that that is for real. But I, I've always thought that I just didn't know for sure because it's hard to judge. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of great actors out there that are complete assholes. Right. They just are good actors. Look at Kevin Spacey. That's one of the most interesting arguments I've ever heard about Kevin Spacey was the mentality of that. Okay. Kevin Spacey is talented. Like there's like, I mean, seven dude, come yeah. on. Like that alone. But he's like, a douche bag. Um, from the allegations to um, J- John Bernthal talking about working with him on baby driver, which I still have not seen. I've heard it's fantastic. Um, uh, there's, um, there's a video you can find of John Bernthal talking about, like, he's like, yeah, dude, he's like, I loved Kevin Spacey's work. He's like, I worked with him and he's like, he was a fucking bully. He's like, he's like, I, I did not enjoy that yeah. experience. And it's, you know, so now again, Troy Baker worked with him on advanced warfare and said they had a great relationship. Well, so it's just, it's, it's just interesting. I'm, I'm how sure that went. I, I personally, I think it's because of the fact that, Troy and Kevin did music together and they were mm. mixing their albums at the same time. When, when you find a musician, like regardless of anything, there's an immediate respect that's there. Yeah. Um, but it was Troy that brought it up where he's like, look, clearly there's somebody who has issues, but they're talented. Yeah. Do we keep allowing them to do what they do just because they're talented? Like, I mean, just like, you know, yeah. like, I, and I know this is a drastic example and I, I've used it before in some different situations, but it's like, just because Hitler was a good cook doesn't mean he's a good person. Like it's like, yeah. he, like he could probably can cook you a good filet mignon. I mean, I'm free. I'm grasping at straws, but it's like, right. It's that type of mentality where it's like, you know, you, you, the talent isn't everything, you know, it's, and that's really kind of weird to say where it's like, you know, talent is something that's either earned or is something you have naturally. See, and that's so, where with Steve, it's hard. It was with Steve Crow. It's hard to, it was hard to judge that. I would see him on, on, you know, talk shows and I would see him, but again, I would see Kevin Spacey on talk shows. Yeah. So it is hard when it, the internet wasn't as advanced as it is now with, no you know, Wikipedia's and, and cell phones, you know, even within the last 10 years, the office has been off the air for a while. It's actually been off the air for, I think almost 10 years. Hmm. Um, actually I'll, I can, I can look that up, but it, it's just, it's one of those. So when you think about that, but I'm really glad that he's on there. He really seems like he's a, um, like really fun person. Kind of like, kind of like Robin Williams. I would want to get, um, I'd want to get ice cream with Steve Carell and just sit yes. at a picnic table outside in the summer and just talk about life. Like, and just, you know, and just experience, like, you know, just not even ask him about the office, but just enjoy just, you know, jokes and like, you know, funny instances yeah. of like, you know, different things of friends and family and everything. Like, 2013 was the last, last year. Oh, you were, oh, you were looking up the last night. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going, it's going to, it's almost 10 year 10 years old, but Mm -hmm. yes that is he is one of those i would the same thing i would still ask him about the office but it that's for a a different level Mm -hmm. you uh so kyle actually has not gone through the office yet we are not no we are this close to finishing big bang he's never seen that so scream at him (laughs) he's also never seen how i met your mother in the comments it's fine we're gonna get tons of comments about it (laughs) he's never seen how i met your mother or the office either so we're gonna or game of thrones we've got a lot of catching up with him to do but yeah so no i'm that's great. I'm very relieved that he is on the list. So yes, next. Uh, okay. So <laughs> now technically the next person is John legend, but I don't really listen to John legend. And I uh, like, so I'm, I'm, there's not much conversation we could sure. have off of that. So, so he's um, one of them. John legend is definitely a nice guy of Hollywood. Um, I've never, or like you can read, you art. can read the whole article if you want to <laughs> um, read. Yeah. Uh, next up though. Um, we all love this guy, and uh, I really hope that this is somebody that I just meet whenever I'm, like, using a drinking fountain, and you'll know what I mean. Okay. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Oh. Um, he is not only considered Hollywood's weirdest actor, but he's also an amazingly good dude. In 2017, Radcliffe, uh, Radcliffe ran to the rescue of a tourist slashed in the face by, a, by moped muggers. 
the thieves tried to take the Taurus uh, Louis, uh, what was it, a Louis uh, Voiton bag? Holy crap. Uh, Louis, I'm, I, that's Louis way, way, ab- yeah, I'll say that's way above my pay grade. Uh, they tried to steal it, and when he wouldn't let go, they cut him in the face. Radcliffe saw all of this and ran after the muggers, trying to catch them for the police. When he lost them, he went back to the Taurus to make sure he was okay until the cops came. Wow. The actor also goes above and beyond with uh, for his fans. In 2019, Radcliffe sent a video message to a four-year-old fan who was diagnosed with cancer. Quote, Hi, Gigi, or Gigi, um, G, I think it's Gigi. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Gigi, nice to meet you. I hope you are having a lovely day wherever you are, he said. I am so sorry I look scruffy and that it is so loud, but I just wanted to send lots of best wishes and love to you, and we are all thinking about you, end quote. Gigi is a Harry Potter super fan, and she likes to dress up in black robes and Potter's famous round glasses while at the hospital. She also loves to watch the seven-part film series while getting treatment. Radcliffe's message definitely made the young girl's mm. day. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about Radcliffe. The only thing I've ever heard about was his brief, I think, like alcoholism during we just, like yeah, half we talked about that. But he kicked it. So it's like he kind of went through his he little. He was a superstar. In, like it yeah. was that that's got that has got to be hard for, you know kids like that you know i um actually um shit so real quick when i lived in pittsburgh literally behind my house or my uh duplex was where i'm gonna crack another pepsi so keep talking uh where emma went to school Mm -hmm. you could see it basically from our backyard and that is where they filmed the movie. Uh, oh, God, what was it? The sun, something sunflowers or sun, I forget the sunflowers. Emma Watson was in it. And it was based off like a true story or something like that. Well, they filmed in the school that Emma went to. Oh, okay. And it was really cool because she came home a couple of times and she was like, Hermione was in our school. (laughs) But anyways, a couple people from like Harry Potter, because they were all friends had came like to hang out and visit for a while with like Emma and stuff. And it was, was it not, was it Gronk or um, Rupert Grint? Yeah. 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 Grint and Ron, if anyone doesn't know. And then one of the other like kind of idiot uh, buddies were there and, (laughs) Apparently they got busted for a bunch of weed. Oh my god! Yeah, they were driving around <laughs> smoking, and they're British. They're that, just leave them that's, alone. That's, like, that's why they were like, like, "We didn't know." Right? I'm like, "Come on, dude!" You know. But at the same time, like you know, these kids, you know, they were kids. Like they're, the the focus is on them all the time, regardless of how major of a uh, like part they were in these movies. Buddy, they were, they're fear famous. Like, yeah. So big deal. <laughs> it's, it's hard that, you know, especially with, with Daniel being the main character, all he had to battle was some alcoholism. Mm-hmm. Again, weed is not terrible. It's just funny in the fact of it's, you got to pay attention, man. Eyes are on you. Yeah. It's, it's eyes are on you. And it's honestly like, it's even to the point of like, you know, if it, and I'm not going to get into this debate, but it's the idea that if you ever supported veganism and if you get caught eating a steak, like dude, like, yeah, the, the internet will rip you apart. Like it's, it's, and just, it's, it's insane. And it's just one of those where when you have, when you have kid actors, I'm glad that all of them kind of eventually got their shit together regardless of like what they had. I know some of them did, but you yeah. think about it. Like we talked about Neil Patrick Harris and Elijah Wood and all these kid actors that did not throw their lives away becoming junkies. Yeah. It's hard. You know, I mean, cause it's, it's crazy. You have money even, young. Like even think about this, like Macaulay Culkin where it's like, you know, for the longest time he was the, idea of what not to be and then look at him he's back he's back well yeah he's, Mike, but it's like he's back on you know square one he's doing great yeah like, it's like he's, he's healthy he's doing by like, bringing himself around things so are working. It, i i'm glad that he that he daniel ratcliffe is on here i wasn't sure because again he is one of those where you assume mm-hmm. he's one of like the good guys right and you assume that he kind of is who he is on screen and off because he's just he seems very pleasant 
Yeah, and it's, I mean, even seeing him on Hot Ones, too, like, Hot Ones is where the truth comes out. Like, you know, just, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, it is, it is like, when you're raging on, you know, five million Scovels on the last dab, like, you know, you're going to, the truth is going to come out. Yeah. Like, you know, so in seeing him take time out of his busy schedule in his hotel room to be on Hot Ones and just to be excited that he was there. Like, yeah, uh, it's kind of like, you know, the post that goes around where it's like, can somebody please remind Mark Ruffalo that he's famous? <laughs> like, it's like, he's constantly like taking photos and like losing his shit and fanboying. It's like, like, yeah, good for him. Like, yeah. That's cool. But it's like, like, dude, like you're famous too. Like, it's, you know, so yeah, um, but that's, but that would yeah. be like me and you becoming famous and being like, Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're yeah. like, yeah, guys, you're the cave cast. Yeah, like you're right. famous too, you know, or whatever. But um, that's, that, that's, that would be hard. That would be hard. <laughs> Speaking of Marvel, we have somebody that we definitely need to talk about. And, um, a true charmer as, as it were Tom Hiddleston. Okay. Um, for those that are watching, if you don't know the name, um, it is the man who plays Loki. He is kind to everyone that he meets and Tumblr has pages upon pages of gifts that are dedicated to three second clips of him radiating positive, happy energy. And he is really as thoughtful as the internet makes him seem. Okay. For example, in 2012, Hiddleston had a Twitter conversation with a reporter who jokingly asked the uh, actor to bring soup to the BAFTA red carpet because it was freezing. Hiddleston actually appeared at the vent in his tuxedo and a thermos of soup. That's just the kind of guy he is. Quote, I requested that Tom bring me tomato soup earlier on Twitter, and I didn't think he'd actually do it. But look at this. That's amazing. The reporter said That's to the camera. Awesome. Quote, that's a thermos of Heinz tomato soup. <laughs> Hiddleston added helpfully. <laughs> so we got tomato, the right kind. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it then says, even though he is one of the most recognized stars in Hollywood, Hiddleston hasn't let his fame get to his head. Quote, Hiddleston's ferocious intelligence, rigorous work ethic, and driving ambition have their, edge, uh, have their edges rounded by a natural charm and a self-deprecating uh, 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 yeah, sense of humor, <laughs> Telegraph noted. Uh, quote, impeccably well-mannered, he holds doors open, insists on paying for drinks with money kept student style in a bulldog clip, oh. and by giving much more time than he needs. Huh. So I, I, I've heard that a lot about him, that, like, he is just a, like, a, just a good dude. Like, he is just an awesome yeah, guy. Yeah, that is, um, that, that's also refreshing. Yeah, it's not not that not that we're gonna glaze over him, but it's, it's just one of those where it's like, I, I've not even really watched Loki so it's, I haven't um, either. Now, what I will say is that I do know that Hiddleston, unfortunately, he was with Brie Larson. Attack me in the in the comments, but he was uh, he co-starred again uh, with her in the uh, movie um, Kong Skull Island. Oh yeah. Um. So it's like he's done other stuff, yeah. and he's like he's you know definitely cemented himself as a great actor. He's just he's we will just always know him as Loki because he's just, unfortunately. He so yeah. Um, did you actually, did you know that he was actually uh, put out for Thor first? They, there's, there's yes. test footage of him with like blonde hair and stuff with the hammer to test how he looked. Cause that was the role he went for. That's and, so weird because I mean, would he have put on weight? Like, I, don't, I don't know. Like cause the, the, pictures i saw of him they, got, they gotta, weren't bad like I look them up if you guys want to see them, i gotta but, see it i gotta see it then. um yeah hiddleston like there's a sense of charm to loki where it's like i sometimes forget that he was the main bad guy in avengers one because of how much everything changed in the mcu and like how everything went on but uh yeah it's they're they're like uh they're not like high quality photos or anything but they're like uh test footage that marvel did when they were first uh coming up with everything for thor Oh, and is, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. That was, it was just some of the test footage that they, wow. that they had. So I don't know if he's wearing a wig or if he dyed his hair. Right. But, uh, right. But yeah, it was, he genuinely went for Thor first. He didn't get it. And, it, and Marvel was huh. like, they're like, you're not Thor, but we would love to cast you for Loki. <laughs> so, and he, and the rest is history. So, right. but, uh, Tom Hiddleston is 100% somebody that, uh, um, 
I would love to be able to just like bump into the shoulder, you know, like on a street corner, see him, get a picture with him, and then let him be uh, on his merry yeah. way. You know, like, thanks, like, man. See you like, later. Yep, yeah. so I know, like, you got shit to do. You're Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Loki. You gotta leave him alone. <laughs> the next person, though, um, I remember this guy being described to me by Ann Heidi, um, who, uh, by the way, has vocalized that she would love to join us for a podcast. Eventually we're going to see how everything works. I'm not promising anything, yeah. but we're going to see how everything works. But when X-Men came out, I remember Ann Heidi saying, I don't understand why they casted Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. He can't do anything except smile. He's just, <laughs> he is just a plucky guy. He is just, he, you know, he's a fantastic singer. He's this, he's that. So Hugh Jackman is an amazing actor because he loves his fans as much as they love him. In 2019, Jackman helped a fan propose to his girlfriend after he sent him a letter asking for his help. Uh, uh, see, he paused. Uh, what's one? Wait, some, Jackman. Wow, somebody totally did not spell that correctly. It, was, it says Jacon. <laughs> Jackman paused his The Man, The Music, The Show performance in St. Paul to help uh, this guy out. Quote, I don't normally do this, and you'll understand why afterward, uh, but I got a letter from a guy named Joe, Jackman told the audience. Joel told me he was going to be here in the audience. <laughs> Jackman hopped off the stage and walked towards Joe and his girlfriend, uh, Sinea, I think that's her name, who was standing shell-shocked next to her soon-to-be fiancé. Jackman handed his new friend the microphone, and Joe said, Sinea, I want to spend every day with you. That's why I asked a superhero to help me out with this. <laughs> Best That's cool. moment ever. That's really cool. <laughs> That's literally what it says. It's great. After she said yes, Jackman gave the couple a hug, wished them well, and hopped back on stage like it was nothing. <laughs> He's also an absolute sweetie to his friends. Back in May 2019, Jackman led the car, uh, led the crowd at his tour stop in the UK and serenading his friend Sir Ian McKellen, who has played um, uh, Magneto, um, on his 80th birthday. He set up his phone to record the moment, saying in the video, quote, I'm sorry, I can't make your party, Ian, but I think I might annoy about 50,000 people. <laughs> End quote. On that cue, That's the whole funny. stadium began to sing. When they were done, Jackman added, love you, man, happy birthday, before blowing a kiss at the camera. He's also been a devoted husband for two decades and has two children, one of which he recently saved from a dangerous riptide. Yes, he really is a superhero. No shit. Hugh Jackman is somebody that the memory that sticks out to me was watching him on the Nickelodeon Awards, and he went over to one of the walls of the set and grabbed like one of the signs off of it. This may have been staged or may have not been, but he ripped it off of the wall and said, some fan is going to win this. So what you need to do is follow the instructions. Yada, yada, yada to do this or whatever. And for the rest of the show, they had a big purple band aid that was on the back of the set because <laughs> Wolverine went up and just ripped it right off. So like, um, Hugh Jackman, just from everything that I understand about him is that he, uh, even the picture they have of him on here, that's a smile that you cannot fake. He, right. He just, he has so much joy. He loves what he does. Um, and even being in like, you know, Le, Le Mis, like, and you know, and the fact that he is such a great singer and he's played Wolverine. He was in something, oh, yeah. he was in something as, uh, um, intense as I believe the movie was trapped. I think it's what it was called, but, um, it was like, they said he went full Wolverine mode without being Wolverine. <laughs> um, it was a very, um, emotional, uh, thing that he did. That's actually, I, I do want to watch it because it was, uh, him and, uh, no prisoners. That's what it was. Prisoners. Prisoner. Okay. It's, uh, it was him and Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, uh, Hugh Jackman's, uh, hmm. daughter gets abducted. And Jake Gyllenhaal is the main uh, cop that's basically investigating, and like they have a very complicated relationship, and like it's it's, it's a very very good movie. Uh, didn't get enough recognition, but uh, Jackman can kind of do 
everything. Like he's just, he's, you know, he's one of those guys where it's like, Oh my God, like you can sing, you can dance. Yeah. It's like, like, like you're kind of like, you know, the terror or not, or uh, what's, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, he was in Brown sugar. Uh, Brown sugar. Yeah. He, or, uh, he was, Oh man. Anyway, like I'm, I'm not going to stay on it. Cause I'm going to forget it. Comment below. If you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so, no but, uh, <laughs> um, it was kind of the idea of this, like, you know, there are some celebrities out there where it's like, you can sing, you can dance, you can act, you can do math, you can raise a family, you can do this. <laughs> it's like, are you yeah. just good at everything? Every, like, right. So, uh, Ty Diggs, that's what it was. Yeah. That's, oh. that's uh, like Ty Diggs is just good at everything. Like he's yeah. just, he's so good. But, uh, um, speaking of, uh, authentic, amazing, bald men, <laughs> Terry Cruz. Okay. I love this man. I love him so much. This is a dude I want to bear hug because <laughs> I just want to take the punishment that comes afterwards because it will be involuntary. <laughs> Terry Crews is a gift to this world. Not only because he is a loving father and an amazing husband for over 30 years, by the way, and a talented actor, but he's also a staunch feminist. He joined the hashtag Me Too movement when he shared his own sexual assault story. He shared how he was assaulted several years ago at a Hollywood party by a high-profile agent, Adam Bennett. Since then, he has been trying to raise awareness about toxic masculinity and sexual assault. After he spoke out about it, he was met with a wall of protest asking why he didn't do anything about it since he was so big. But Cruz said that responding with toxic masculinity doesn't solve the problem. He knew that if he punched the agent like the people suggested, everyone in that room would make a phone call to every movie studio in the world. Quote, well, you know about Terry, end quote, and they'd believe them. Pushing back is not an option. It just isn't. I got too much to lose, he told Esquire. Quote, this is what tax. Uh, to, this is what toxic masculinity is. People think, "Look how big you are. Look how strong you are." If I was you, I would have killed them. But but my body is not for killing. In America, we want to finish the movie. And the movie, if you're a man, is Dirty Harry. <laughs> he said. Hmm. So yeah, it's Terry Crews. I, Interesting. I, he is somebody that I know has been through it even in his yeah. younger years mm -hmm. um you know because it's there's always the joke of like you know you know if, if you got fucked with you know then you're gonna make sure you can't get fucked with anymore you know right but um like have you seen that guy's workout regimen like it's dude it is incredible <laughs> yeah it's just it's insane he's He's one of those. He's he's like the Arnolds and Sylvester's. He's just gonna be big all of his life, even into his like older years. Yeah, it's uh, especially. I I'm love glad. Him. I'm glad he's on the list, <laughs> especially because he did the Old Spice commercial where they're like, oh, yeah. unlimited power. <laughs> like he's all of his muscles, muscles are flexing. yeah, flexing around. <laughs> it's just it's so good, dude. Uh, oh, that was that was great. Um, he's even talked about um like his. Uh, like again, hot ones was like, you know, he loved talking about like one of his favorite desserts and he loves like, I think it's like, it's either like, like banana bread with like, you know, creamy icing and like mm. raisins. And like, he's like, it's like, it's one of my favorite snacks and like, interesting. I just, never heard he's, that one. he's just a guy that, um, again, like, you know, with these big bodybuilder dudes is that you always have this mentality that they're going to have this asshole complex and yeah, it's so rare that we get to see somebody as genuine as him right and it's just like he's just he's just a guy that loves his family he's been married for 30 years dude like it just 30 that's a long time it is a long <laughs> so, time <laughs> um our next guy how many we got left um we have a we have a couple uh let's see we have one two and we have three. Whew, we do have a bit. We're gonna we're gonna choose some different things here. I've I've um uh, I'm I planned for this just in case okay. if we, if we uh, had a moment of like oh like like you know we're getting too far we're doing this but um here's what I will ask you: Would you rather have something or have somebody that you know for a fact that is from your childhood? or somebody who can make you laugh and then also blow you away with their dramatic ability. Well, man, that's pretty much anybody from my childhood. Okay. That's that man. It's fair. Um, oh, okay. Um, 
Would you rather see somebody who has busted ghosts or somebody that everything you can guarantee is going to be all right, all right, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do Matthew McConaughey. Okay. So uh, Bill Murray was the other one. If you want to read about Bill Murray. I already know on. Bill Murray yeah. is the shit. <laughs> Uh, since Matthew McConaughey was seven, every Thanksgiving has spent handing out food meals on or handing out food uh, with meals on wheels. Okay. Even when the actor hit massive success and became an A-list star with his uh, A-list star. Wow, this guy's grammar was really off there for a second. And became an A-list star with a family. He has spent each Thanksgiving with the organization. In 2019, he gathered up his whole family and cooked and delivered. The Thanksgiving dinner to folks in Austin who uh, he said, says, quote, we got our kiddos. We got some friends kiddos with us, he said, <laughs> and it's nice to go in our backyard here in Austin and to deliver some meals to people who can't cook for themselves. A lot of them we've met before. They don't have family around here anymore uh, anymore or their family is in a different state. So they're sitting at home alone today mm. End quote. But his goodwill doesn't just stop at the holidays. A month prior to Thanksgiving, McConaughey prepared and delivered 1,600 turkey dinners for first responders and homeless individuals affected by California wildfires. He paired up with uh, with disaster relief organization uh, Operation Barbecue Relief and Wild Turkey Bourbon, where he is a creative director, to make 800 dinners for firefighters who were battling the back wild uh, blazes wow. at the time. In addition to that, he also helped prepare another 800 meals for folks uh, who displaced from their homes. He is a true hero. Hmm. That is... Genuine dude. That is uh, something I never thought I would uh, hear out of Matthew. But not, not like that, but that's just... That's interesting that his, his major fame and stardom, he still, you know... It's not like he just donates and it, and it goes out. Like, he, he physically takes them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. See, and that's and that's a lot of like what some like celebrities won't do. Like whether I mean, if they want to stay anonymous, I get it. But it's like right. he doesn't care. Like he'll be on there on the front lines. Like, hey man, I just wanted to drop us off to you. Just like make sure you got it, man. Enjoy your <laughs> yeah. dinner. Like you know, just it's just it's it's so cool to just know that it's like there's some of them that just don't give up. That you know. Uh, you know, physical interaction yeah. of like knowing where it's like, Hey man, I was just your delivery boy. That's all this was, that's all this was, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> um, so, but uh, as far as like McConaughey, like, I mean, was there ever anything that you ever heard about him or anything like no. that, you know, whatever suggest or not suggest? I or? always know. I, the only thing I ever heard about him was his hygiene. And it wasn't, he doesn't the, wear, uh, he doesn't wear deodorant. He doesn't wear deodorant. Yeah. Um, so, that is like really the only thing I've ever heard like quote negative about him. So he's a smelly, nice guy. He just, he <laughs> believes, yeah, he believes you should smell like a man. Mm. You know, you smell like a man. If you, if, if you stink, it's because you've been working. So the, <sighs> I and can that, see some, some levity to that. That's, yeah. that's understandable to a point, but yeah. So I, I've, I've never heard anything bad about him, but I've always, I've never heard that he was like that kind of guy. So that's really cool. Now we are pushing about an hour. Um, so, um, however, excuse me. Um, we're going to do three more. Okay. Um, this first one is definitely because we need to talk about this because you're here. John Krasinski. Oh, I told you earlier, he wasn't on here yet. But oh he's yeah. Here now. So John Krasinski is an awesome husband a great dad to do uh, to two daughters and a humble and down to earth a lister. He got his first good guy status while portraying the lovable Jim Halbert on the office. But that title cemented when he married his pot, uh, partner, El Emily Blunt. I can't fucking talk. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Oh yeah. She's, um, uh, uh, begin quote here. It says the best days of my life started when I met my wife. That's the truth. End quote. Krasinski has said, She's one of the coolest people who's talented. She's beautiful. And she's certainly out of my league. <laughs> <laughs> the two met at a restaurant when Blunt came over to say hi to their mutual friend who Krasinski was having dinner with quote. It's one of those things where as soon as you meet someone, you kind of know Krasinski shared on the Ellen, De uh, Ellen DeGeneres show quote. I wasn't really looking for a relationship. 
Then I met her and I was so nervous. I was like, oh God, I think I'm going to fall in love with her. And as I shook her hand, I went, I like you. <laughs> the two quickly married and had two daughters together. And Krasinski is always willing to make sacrifices for his family. For example, in 2018, when he was filming Jack Ryan in Canada and Blunt was working on Mary Poppins returns in the UK, Krasinski flew back to London every weekend to be with his wife and kids. Hmm. Now that's dedication. I mean, when you have the money. Well, correct. Um, I mean, that's like how we've heard, like what you even said, like Eminem would like fly like back home, like after every yeah. concert. I mean, again, like when if Haley was good, sick, like, yeah. But that's, I mean, John Krasinski is somebody that I feel like is kind of the same thing with um, along those lines where you just every time you see him, you. He, He's like, he doesn't know that he's famous and he doesn't even like, he's like, why am I even here <laughs> right. kind of thing. And I know that, I know two things about him that kind of, I want to say irritate me, but I'm like, oh man, you lost points. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like scary movies. See, that's what's so interesting about A Quiet Place. It's, 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 it wasn't supposed to be a scary movie. Apparently it was supposed to be about his kids. Yeah. And like, you know, what he would do, you know, like how he would, you know, do anything for them. And it just kind of ironically turned into this like kind of scary movie. And that was always kind of like not the joke about it, but like the irony that he he made such a good like kind of like scary thriller. His, then, he, then it's not his forte. His main focus, and, and this is like I mean, I know I talk about this all the time, but you know, you'll know what I'm saying is that what John Krasinski did with A Quiet Place is the same thing that Naughty Dog did with a, with The Last of Us. Oh, yeah. It was it was just a story about a relationship. They added everything yeah. around it as I hit this. But it's like they added everything around it. Right. It's like John Krasinski knew that it's like, well, I would care for my kids and sacrifice for my kids in the worst yeah. situation. Yeah. He just happened to create a situation where you can't make noise because there's monsters. Yeah. And it's like, and it's so interesting that it's like he, he made it so effectively and that wasn't even the point. It's just, it's, it's, it's so impressive. Like a quiet place is one of the most original horror movies I've yeah. ever seen. And it's he like, I mean, also like, what was it? 13 hours. Uh, yeah. He, in, he, like, was, he was in that, um, and I, you know, I've never seen Jack Ryan or anything, but I've heard, I've heard good things, but you know, with, with his stint on the office, it was, I, with the exception of Steve Carell, I felt like a lot of people were going to get typecasted mm. because they were that character for so long. Most of the characters don't really do much else. They've made their office money and they don't need to. Right. But it was a refreshing thing to see John Krasinski not only being in other things and doing a very good job, but writing his and directing his own stuff. But yeah, so for him to be yeah. one of the good guys is not shocking at all. Like I and that is I'm I'm glad that it's just at least stated. That way I didn't have to wonder, you know, but <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you're about to be very happy with our second to last. I mean, you're going to be happy with both of them, but especially with this one, because not only is he close very much to your heart, but um, he's close to my heart, too. And uh, we grew up watching him on a show that had some balls that made us deal with the personal, emotional things that we were going through. And made us laugh harder than I think that probably anybody else did at that point. Who, Will Smith? Will Smith. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Will Smith is all about giving back, even if that means talking one-on-one -on -one to his fans. Enter Smith's inspirational YouTube channels and podcast. He creates motivational speeches on everything from working towards success, discovering your dreams, and how to be in a healthy marriage. For example, in one of his Instagram pep talks, he reminded his followers to surround themselves with people who inspire them rather than bring them down. Quote, I just saw this uh, roomy quote that I love. Set your life on fire and seek those who fan your flames. 
the Philly translation of that is don't be hanging with no jank ass jokers that don't help you shine. <laughs> Did you ever hear his other inspirational quote? And it was, it's no, give it to me. What is it? It's I'll probably butcher it, but it's at the end of a song. Actually, uh, Joyner Lucas made a song called will. Oh yeah. I've been feeling like, will. yeah, yeah. yeah and it's yeah. just one of those get, give the roses to the people that deserve them now before they die kind of thing. But, um, at the end, he says something about like I'm I'm built I'm I'm building my wall brick by brick and you hear at the end Will Smith says um if you want to build a wall don't go I'm going to go build a wall lay a brick the most perfect way you can lay a brick make sure it's perfect and then do it again the next day and then eventually you'll have a perfect wall so you need to do it brick by brick, day by day. And I was like, whoa, dude, like that is, you don't have to go, God damn, I got to build this. Nope. All right. That is as perfect as I can get it. I'm going to stop. One day at a time. And then tomorrow I'm going to lay it right next to it and get it as perfect. And it's, it's such a simple analogy, but it makes so much sense. Will Smith has a towering wall. He's oh. taken his time. And he's not everything he's done. Not everything he's done has been great. But it's well, just, right. it's, I mean, because like there's been some movies where I've seen like, you know, like, clips Man. of him and I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah. but the thing is like you and I talked about it the one night where I was kind of sad when I didn't have cable anymore. And especially when they took it off of Nick at night was that dude, I fell asleep to the fresh Prince of Bel-Air all the time because it's what I remember as a kid. Yeah. I loved the, like, you know, uncle Phil, you know, I mean, I mean, God rest his soul, James Avery, but it's, you know, it's, it's original he, shredder. He will always be our shredder. <laughs> always. Yeah. It's just, you know, but it was just the fresh Prince did so much to acknowledge the things like, you know, being able to acknowledge racial discrepancy was, in a way that was not in your face and was unbelievable. I was just about to say, like, and, I, and I, please don't take this the wrong way. This sounds different in my mind probably, but did you even notice that it was a black family? No, like, like, like you didn't, you didn't, which, you didn't the care. Thing, like, because the normal, sh like, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be as, I'm not, I'm not trying to be crappy with this, but it's like the normal like shitty stereotypes that will be put with that yeah. was not done in that show. They no. were a family that had issues. They like, they like it was, you know, yeah. Uncle Phil was a judge. He made a killing, but the point is money didn't save them. Right. It was like, now money did have a lot to do with it. And it's more so with his knowledge. Like when he went in and bailed them out because they were wrongfully arrested, he's like, yeah. going to wrap you in so much litigation. Even your grandchildren are going to have, are going to need lawyers. Yeah. Like it was just like, like uncle Phil was a badass. He like was it savage was, dude. And it was just, you know, in everything from the behind the scenes of, you know, like relationships that, you know, fell apart, but then came together mm -hmm. and, you know, just, you know, from the episode when we see Will's, you know, Will's dad yep. and, you know, just that quote of like, why don't he want me? And it's like, dude, yeah. we, like not everybody has had that dad complex, but what I can tell you is that there have been people that have been abandoned by other close relationships and that show nailed it. I can't it watch that scene without crying. Well, like, it's, right. It's, dude, it, like, it, it didn't it's matter. Too good. Yeah. It's it, so good. It didn't matter the scenario. That's why, that's why I said it is. I, I didn't mean for that to be shitty, but like it, it, a lot of, a lot of the shows at that time were white families. It's, and that's the thing is like, like it, 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 it I, didn't matter. You had, you had this, it's so black frustrating. family yeah. that had the, it, like you were saying, it had, it finally had a, an equal opportunity to shine that way. Yeah. It wasn't on the longest. It as, wasn't a as, family from poverty. It wasn't a well, family no, from, you know, or this. No, but, it was, it was but just, that's, that would have been the stereotype of, of that kind of family. And I'm yeah. glad that it wasn't, but I mean, no, the, the, the show was only on like six seasons, I think. Compared to like so other, solid, <laughs> to, to compared know. to like other shows, but <laughs> I never once paid attention to that until I got older. Not not in a negative way, but I was like, "Wow, I, I guess I never really paid attention that because it didn't it didn't matter to me." Mm -hmm. But when I look back at the fact of, think about it, there are 
our era, we had Family Matters and and The Fresh Prince. Everything else yeah. was a white based family. And two very normal families. Two one, like, one was a judge, they, one was a cop. Yeah, and, and they it was, nailed it. Was, it's it was like the, the fact that it was just like you know being able to see you know the like the fact where it's like you know that like there were episodes that did tackle the the race thing but it's like for the most part it was will being an idiot and getting saying, carlton that, that in wasn't the situations the focus. he didn't yes. want to be in like yeah. it was it, it wasn't it, was, it wasn't <laughs> a oh racial hear me roar like you're right it had its moments for the right reasons yeah. It was Will being a fucking idiot because he was the the outcast. He, he was, was the he yeah. was the hood rat. Mm-hmm. He was. That's what made it funny. That was the quote stereotype. There was the you, and you're gonna have it. There's even in even in other shows. There's the hood rat. Look at Friends. I consider Phoebe the hood rat. Yeah, she was the one that was on the streets. She was the one that's rugged and savage. It was such a good balance that show. Deserved to be on the air six more seasons. I was, I think, I was really Will, shocked that it was I, over that quick. I think Will's, uh, like movie career was going way bigger than it, he anticipated. So that was starting to take factor in the show. I think, but yeah. Well, um, to to finish up his uh, to get to the uh, the ultimate titan of uh nice guys as i would say um yes i'm putting him above keanu reeves because uh he is Um, he has done a full uh thing but before we get to that we're gonna finish just what this said about will it says uh as he was talking about the no jank ass jokers that don't help you shine oh uh, it says the prerequisite for spending time with any person is that they nourish and inspire you they feed your flame he said look at your last five text messages are those people feeding your flames or are they dousing your fire? Put your phone down just for a second and look around. Look at the people that are around you. Are those people throwing logs on your fire or are they pissing on it? Smith continued. Mm. The people that you spend time with are going to make or break your dreams. Everybody don't deserve to be around you. You got to defend your light with your life. He also has, an, uh, this says an adorable YouTube channel where he shares everything from family vacations to his kids' major milestones. So, oh, Will, so something like the the red table or, so, or the round table or something like that. I've never like, you know, watched it personally. It's all right. But, uh, um, but I, yeah. I, I, I feel like they're basically just, it's like just paparazzi news and I'm, I'm not bashing it. It's just, it feels like it's actually probably, it's actually smart probably in the fact of here, we're just going to sit down and talk about everything. That way you don't have to be in my fucking face about it every two seconds. It's probably smart actually yeah, to do that. It's kind of like the whole eight mile thing of like, go ahead and tell them, tell them something that they don't know about. Uh, yeah. Like, 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 you know, just you know, go right like, ahead. But I think Will has had such a healthy career <laughs> that when, when Will first started, I, I read I read a thing that said his script was hidden in every room. Yeah. Because in between he he was terrible at lines because he just he couldn't remember them and it was his fucking show. So for like the first two seasons, he would have to stop or like in a break, like pull it out from a pillow and read it real quick and then ad lib or do whatever. And then it eventually got to where obviously he got better at remembering his lines, but he I mean, imp- clearly he's done great. Like, oh yeah. Work. So it's but like, yeah, right. He improv like half of that show and it shows not, in a, not in a negative way, mm-hmm. not in a negative way. He's kind of like that whole Steve Carell thing. Like he, he, he adapted to his environment and just went with it. He kind of did the whole Jim go Jim Carrey mode. Yeah. I, I knew what it, at a young age, he was going to be something big. And I knew that even watching him grow as, you know, you're like, Oh, you see, you see Will Smith and then he's on bad boys and he's saying, fuck. You're like, he doesn't say fuck. 
<laughs> because he had this like squeaky clean image. He doesn't swear in his raps. He was, he is nice to women. Mm-hmm. Like he is all of these things. So it was so odd to see him like quote out of character. Yeah. But Will Smith was, you could always tell he just like radiates niceness no matter where he goes. I've, I've never once heard about, I mean, of course, like, I mean, this, and this is such a shitty thing is that it's like, you know, like when you, when I say this statement is that it's like, I've never heard anything negative about him. No, dude, I'm not a celebrity. I don't ever like foresee myself ever considering myself a celebrity. But what I will tell you is that I've got bad days, dude. I don't like to be talked to. I want to be left the fuck alone. Like, it's like, I don't, I don't want to like deal with it. And it's with being to that level, you don't get to have that luxury. And that's, and it's so right. frustrating where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into whole, the whole thing, but it's like the older I get and the more trauma and stress and anxiety that I deal with, I understand why Britney Spears went fucking ape shit and shaved her head and fucking started smashing car windows, dude. Like I've like, I've never had that happen to me to that extent. Well, right. But, but, but it's just like, dude, like everybody has their embarrassing moments that they do something that they are ashamed of. Everybody and, does. And it's the idea that when you're a celebrity, it's then recorded. You don't get to have it when nobody knew you. When you know, and it's I, and it's it's so fr- like, dude, like everybody that we're talking about on this list, good or bad, on any instance, they're humans. Yeah, like, dude, it's like they've reacted to a I situation know, that's been brought to them. I know there was one time it was kind of one of those like friend of a friend thing mm. um, that I worked with, and long story short, it was I I was getting very scared at this statement, and you'll see why. Long story short, um, said friends were like on like a like a bros vacation kind of thing. Um, they were in, I believe, Miami. Hmm. And this was like a long time ago. They were out. Like, I don't know, like earlier in the morning, like 10 or 11, you know, and uh, they saw Will Ferrell. Ah, okay. And all they were doing, like they weren't even like trying to bombard him with like, they were just like, oh man, like fucking Will Ferrell. Like, hey, and he's like, every fucking time I'm out somewhere, you got to come up to me. And they're like, whoa, man. Like they weren't even like trying to get photos. They were just like, hey, dude, like you're fucking Will Ferrell. And they're like, whoa, dude, pump the brakes. And they started to walk away. He's like, I'm just fucking with these. Like, you guys want to go to lunch? <laughs> Took him to lunch. <laughs> but he gave him that, like, oh, shit moment. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sobered sh- him up real quick. Yeah. Like, yeah. And they were just like, whoa, motherfucker. Wait, we were just saying, hey. But he took him out to, like, a brunch lunch thing. And they said they had a great time, obviously. He's everything that you would think he is all of this stuff. And wow. the reason I say, I'm pretty sure he was rapping Talladega nights. That's why he was in Miami. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm pretty sure that's right. what it was, but it I could be right. Burns going. And yeah. Shit, like, but you know, it was just like, they're like, man, he had us going. He was like, mother fuck. <laughs> like, Oh, like having a complete I've, meltdown. Um, the, we're, we're at the end of the li- end at the end of this list. And, um, Will Ferrell is not on it, but I have heard nothing but good things about him. He's just a big goofball, man. It's just, he's just, he's somebody that like, I'd be okay with running into. Like realistically, I would probably say that like, I'd be choosing a steak with him at Walmart. Like it just be one of those. I'm like, what's up, man. (laughs) Or like, like, it's like, I've known him. Like you're like seen him for the past few years. What's up, Will? (laughs) Right. You know, it's ironic as Will, you know, Smith, but we're going to um, end tonight with somebody that you put above be Keanu Reeves. I have um, not hmm. because um, not because I'm, I think this is a competition or anything to that effect, but there is a very specific reason that I, I feel that um, not, and it's not even for the comparison. It's the fact that, I feel that he is the right person to end this list on. And he is in fact, the ending of uh, the list that we are on. Um, These are in, by the, by the way, in no particular order. These are just, just, just the good guys of Hollywood. 
So, um, this man changed my life from a cinematic standpoint for 10 years. And I am so happy that he took the risk, did what his wife wanted him to do. Oh, Robert Downey Jr. Throughout his nearly five decade career, Robert Downey Jr. has become one of the most lovable movie stars in Hollywood. He has overcome drug addiction to become one of the greatest actors of our generation, as well as a devoted husband and a father. When he took on the role of Tony Stark in Iron Man, the reason the character was so liked was because the fans saw a similarity between the man and the character. They're one and the same. Quote, anyone else got a sneaking suspicion that Robert Downey Jr. and Tony Stark are actually the same person? E.W. asked. <laughs> While he has an adoring swarm of fans, Downey Jr. is also an amazing father to his three kids. Quote, there was all this trepidation, all this projection, all this anticipation and goodwill and a good vibe about it. He told Esquire about uh, what he felt about the first, uh, about, about the birth of his second son. Quote, but what you're squeezing to the side or what it's in the glove box is these thousands of forms of fear. And then he was born and they've all just kind of scattered now. It seems like he's always been there. Hmm. I have heard many things about RDJ, um, specifically Tom Holland, who said RDJ is the first one on set and he is the last one to leave. Yeah, I've heard that. He acknowledges everybody and shakes every like the script supervisor the key grip the you know the caterers he goes and introduces himself and gets to yeah. know them and makes sure that he talks to them robert is somebody that has an acting pedigree that is unparalleled yeah but he his, yeah. but he never once uses the clothes that he wears the the eighty dollar haircut that he has, the you know very intricate Iron Man beard that he grows, which sometimes I think he grows just on a whim because he can <laughs> because he is fucking Tony Stark. Um, if there was ever anyone in Hollywood that should have gone down a road to ultimate destruction, it was him. It was him. And he has risen above every trial and tribulation that has come before him. And personally, I know for me, I went and saw the first Iron Man. And I didn't know it at that time, but I was just like, this is going to change everything. They literally caught lightning in a bottle, and it was amazing. The last re- thing that they did was Blade. I remember you know, so watching it's just, Iron it's just, Man. It's, it's incredible. I remember watching Iron Man and thinking, Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> before, like before going right? in, and I was like, because not that he wasn't famous or a good actor. He wasn't Tony Stark yet. He, yeah. And you kind of, you kind of had this, and and I knew at that time that like he had gotten his shit together and stuff, you know, he'd done some other movies, but I, I, well, first of all, I used to get him and Harry Connick Jr. mixed up when I was younger a lot, when he was kind of a big thing, but, um, seeing him was odd. That's not who I associated Robert Downey Jr. to be. And then I remember watching it going, yeah, this is big. Had they cast anybody else other than him, regardless of him being a nice guy or not, let's say he's a Kevin Spacey, which I'm glad he's not. Yeah. Right. Would it have changed my views? Probably. I would have still watched him. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I don't agree with doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, not, you know, 
see it or do whatever, but I'm glad that he did these things that his wife got his ass in gear and that got him to be on that list of good guys of Hollywood. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't think he always was. No. And it's, I mean, that's, that's just from the speculation of, you know, just the public eye of what we could see about him. Like, dude, like, would you be the nicest guy in Hollywood right. if you were, you know, in court on camera looking the way that you were at that point at the lowest point of your life? Like, there's a reason why he doesn't like talking about it because he has exceeded it. He's moved on. It's like, um, he's, I, done, you he's done as such a, like, I, I know, like, it's, it's, there's some people that can face their trauma and some that can't. I mean, there's a conversation to be had yeah, there, but. You do have to have some ground where it's like, all right, man, well, you know it's going to be talked about. But, yes. The the only time that I've ever seen him have a good uh, sense of humor about it, and it's still one of my favorite viral videos that's on uh, YouTube, assuming that it still has the original channel it was based off of, um, <laughs> when Tropic Thunder came out. It was him, Jack Black, and Ben Stiller at the MTV Movie Awards. And they're all sitting in, you know, like Ben Stiller's office. And it's, you know, him just like, or it's Robert Downey Jr. looking at the, uh, you know, poster for Iron Man. He's like, oh, yeah, that's good. That's just, that's just so good. It's <laughs> awesome. And uh, Ben's like, hey, man, I got this new poster for Tropic Thunder. Check it out. And he drops the curtain and it's Ben Stiller as his character. Then Iron Man as General Osiris oh, and yeah. Kung Fu Panda as like whatever. Yeah. And they're like, oh, wow. Like you really went the extra mile. And, you know, and they're like, like, well, aren't they going to be disappointed when they go to the movie and Iron Man and Kung Fu Panda aren't in the movie? <laughs> and it basically turned into Ben Stiller and uh, Tony. Or uh, Wow. Oh, my God. I almost said Tony because he is Tony Stark. RDJ arguing. To which Ben Stiller looks at him and goes, you know what? Maybe if I would have gotten caught with a hooker in a suitcase full of blow, maybe then you'd be on my side. And it just got super quiet. <laughs> and Jack Black's like, he didn't mean it. Just calm down. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was the only time I've ever seen, like, like just him kind of, like, approach it, like, in a comedic way. Because, yeah. obviously, they glossed right over it. But... Um, but no, just, he is a, he's a guy that he has a lot of humor about himself. He doesn't take himself yeah. too seriously. And one of the most impressive things that I've seen about him. And I talk about the, the show all the time, literally every day was when he was on Joe Rogan's podcast. Here's the interesting thing about RDJ. If you watch any other interview they only talk to Rogan. RDJ has his chair back like this. Talks to he talks to Joe and then talks to Jane. Yeah. He includes all of them in the conversation. Like he'll be like, he's like, if you can look it up, try to find this or whatever. But like he will, <laughs> he like, cause RDJ can't do anything except acknowledge everybody that is in yeah. the room, even if they're behind the scenes. And it's, it is so cool just to see that he really is a real life superhero, even with just him being human. Yeah. He is just, he acknowledges everyone. He wants everyone to feel and included. That's, and that's why he is one of the good guys then, you know, that, that proves that <sighs> cool, he, man. he did, he, he changed it. And I'm, and I'm glad that that is really, that is a really amazing thing that he is. To, to come from that and for him to be on that list. That is pretty incredible. I think that um, the best way that I think to, to close this out is understand that the art form of film and of everything else has a lot of corruption in it. You can, oh. you can watch even, interviews with Will Friedel where he's talked about that he uh the uh, if anyone doesn't know who he is who played Eric Matthews on uh Boy Meets World but uh after he got done with the sh with the show be uh, Boy Meets World he would be on a train for you know hours to get to a tryout for some part in a new show or something and would walk into the room after that train ride being tired your bladder is full and like all you want to do is go try out and they look at him and go you're too fat go home that is the severity yeah. 
of what happens in Hollywood. And these guys that we've listed off now, we didn't get to everyone, whether it was for we decided not to or because we didn't have time or because of, you know, whatever reason. There's more people that deserve this recognition. And guys, when you are on that level, I'm not saying I know this from from experience. and I'm not trying to preach to you. I'm not trying to make sure that this, you know, is something that gets noticed. But what I am saying is that these guys des deserve our recognition. They have seen the ugliest of the ugly and have said, no, I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to stand up and stand for what's right and love my family and make this my career because it's what I wanted. And I'm blessed enough to even have it. These are the guys that I hope that never stop getting work yeah. and creating the yeah. art that we so much enjoy. And there's so much more. Uh, Joseph Gordon Lovett was on this list. Idris, oh, yeah. Uh, Idris Elba was on this list. Uh, Elijah Wood was on this list. I mean, there's there's so many people that were on this, uh, which I'm saving Elijah Wood for when we do our episode of Young Childhood Stars that didn't go crazy. Again, subscribe. That way you don't miss it. But this is something that um, we've talked about for a minute is just to acknowledge just for a change, not to just talk about the drama and the bullshit and just everything that goes on in the daily world. Like, you know what? I want to talk about the good stuff that yeah. happens. Yeah. Um, and a very good, uh, you know, the idea of the or very good and the idea of what John Krasinski did during COVID of like, let's, let's look at some good news. What's some well, good they still, things. Yeah. They still, you know, yeah. The good news network. Yeah. Just, they, they, know, they still do that. Oh, it's, and I'm, mm -hmm. I've, I've not kept up with it. I watched the first episode. I got weepy eyed. It was great. So, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> it just, it's, it is so impressive um, to see this. And I guess my, my, to, to close it out um, with everything, uh, which I've, you know, obviously we'll do our plugs and we'll do everything we normally do. But I guess my question for you, as far as the good guys of Hollywood, what's your take on, on everything? Well, I mean, when you, when you have stardom, if that big, <clears throat> that big, and regardless of it being a successful TV show or an actor in movies or both, um, it does take a toll on you. I, like you said, we, we have bad days. I'm not, we're not even superstars. This is a whole different level of stress. And, uh, um, I guess probably just a work environment in general. Yeah. It's probably fun, mm -hmm. but all eyes are on you. So to have, to have a, a list of, certain said people to be on it, that they're just one of the nicest people in Hollywood says something. Right. You think Steve Carell had never fucking snapped? <laughs> may, 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 maybe not maybe on set. Maybe his taco was undercooked. Like, you know. Like right. <laughs> but I mean, maybe right. not on set, mm -hmm. but he probably goes back to his room and freaks out or vents to his wife about fucking on set. Like, who knows? Who knows? That doesn't matter. He at least they with these people at least portray this um um persona still, even when they're having a really bad day. Yeah. A really bad day. You think Keanu Reeves hasn't fucking thrown something across his room or flipped a table before? Probably. Yeah. It's just not, you gotta, all you got to do is read about that guy's history to know for a fact he has every right to yeah, be angry. He just doesn't do it at a bar. Right. Or at a restaurant. Or, you know, checking his coat after his valet is done. Like, whatever. Right. Not that he, not that he's, imp, like, not perfect or, you know, doesn't, but they, these people just don't let you see that. And not to be like, oh, uh, like, it's a mask or anything. But no, it's because... All right, just let it go, or you know, whatever, or one of those like I'm famous because I have fans. If I do this, I'm not going to have fans anymore. And I'm not going to be famous, right? It's that whole LeBron James mentality. He's not a very humble person. Well, you need to be a very humble person because all of us fans can take it away real quick. Yeah, we made you this. Don't get it twisted. So I think I think that's yes. where 
I think that's where a lot of these actors have a, a good mentality of just, this is part of my job. This is my job. Like th this is my job. Sorry that you're eating steak right now, but 800 people know who you are in the surrounding block. Yeah. You didn't get a Se VIP room. Yeah. So you're Seven down people us, are probably so. going to come up to you and ask you to sign an autograph while you're eating said steak. See, and that's, that's also something that I try to like, you know, be sensitive to is like watching uh Hulk Hogan with his wife on when, like when he had his reality show, like when mm -hmm. he's out trying to have dinner with his wife and 30 people came up to him where it's like, dude, like, come on. Like you can clearly see that they are, you know, like, you know, dressed up and they're this, like, yeah. you know, like that where it's like, I would, um, the only thing I'd make it with is like, Hey guys, just hope you guys have a good dinner. Like, you know, if it's your anniversary, yeah. happy anniversary, like you know, real, whatever, real quick like, before we wrap, cause it is going on an hour yeah, and a half. No, uh, uh, yeah. That, that actually happened. I mean, he, I don't want to say he's not super famous, but he's not like that kind of stardom, but very great stand up comedian had a couple shows, but Billy Gardell came into the store. I was like, Oh my God, he was with his wife and kid. All I said to him was, hey, man, before you leave, mm -hmm. I didn't bombard him and I didn't do all this. But if they had questions, I was there because I had to know about the store, but, you know, products. But and he kept to his word. I didn't I, I wasn't up his ass. I was just like, hey, man, if you wouldn't mind, I know you're here with your wife and your kid, like yeah. your family. Like, I'm not trying to be that guy, but. I'd like to be that guy for five seconds before you leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's like, and, let, me, let me have that. Like, And yeah. he did. We, there's a, it was on, the I'm pretty sure, the depression episode or whatever, but mm -hmm. I we, I talk about it. But yes, there's, that's there's, how. There's also been some Kyle Wright 425 episodes that I've used that picture for your, uh, for, yeah, like, for your yeah. like, you know, thing whenever cameras ran out. So, so you can dig deep and find it. But yeah, it, so. it's just, it, it's nice to know that people <sighs> know that he knows that's part of his job. Yeah. In a sense, he is famous because of people like me enjoying his content. Right. I didn't ask to go out to dinner with him or come over, exchange numbers. It was just, can I be that guy for five seconds? This is, this is something that is lost on a lot of people was that um, I've talked about it before, but like I, I got to meet the uh, lead singer of a band called House of Heroes. Mm -hmm. They opened up for Skillet and Toby Mac. Now yeah. those are two, like I've, I've used the you know term a lot, but it's like the titans of you know Christian rock and mm -hmm. rap music. House of Heroes was awesome, dude. They blew the roof off of that place. They were like the Christian, like Coheed and Cambria. I was so impressed by what they did, and it was like because their lead singer was you know doing very intricate guitar playing while he was on stage, yeah. while he was singing. I was I was just like, dude, like. I didn't care about what your message was at that point. I just, I was like, dude, like you're impressive. And after they were done, they kind of like had the halfway point. I went and got like a taco or whatever. And like, you know, like while we were waiting for the next uh, band, but I saw him and I went over and I talked to him. I shook his hand and I like, we, we bullshitted for like 20 minutes because they were an unknown band and nobody yeah. knew anything. And it was kind of weird because he just, he looked at me and he's like, you want me to sign something? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Yes, I do. And I, I like went and emptied my cup of like Dr. Pepper of whatever or whatever. I, I think it was like ice I had left, but um, he signed the bottom of it. And I just, you know, like we, we talked music for like yeah. that time and, you know, like we had our, you know, a good spiritual conversation and, you know, and everything that went on with that. And I just, I was like, dude, I'm like, keep doing what you're doing, man. I'm like, you've got an incredible opportunity. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, I have since lost the cup. I don't know where it's at, but I'll tell you what though. I'm never going to forget that experience. It's because they were one of the, just because it wasn't Hollywood. It was one of the good people like yeah. Hop, Hobson's one of them. I've met Hobson many times. Yeah. You know, even before he was super famous and after he was super famous, he takes the time to, Talk to everybody after venues, after shows. He will take a thousand photos with you. He will sign seven things. He will do because he knows he got here because of people like me. Yeah. He wants to enter. And if he if he just doesn't have the time, he will truly apologize. And then, like, I've even seen it to where, hey, I'm in. New Jersey and I got nowhere like anybody got a home cooked meal. I can come like he does it like he'll go hang out with fans. Yeah. 
these people that were on this list are on it for a reason. Yeah. And it's because of people like that. When you can be put on that kind of a list, it speaks volumes on who you are as a person. And at the end of the day, no matter what you create as art, who you are as a person is what is the most important. Correct. That is why I try my best to only take in the art that is done from a pure, you know, person that is just like, you know, it's like, hey, man, I love this. I did this. Mm -hmm. Please enjoy it. Right. Um, you know, Benjamin Burnley from Breaking Benjamin has said it where he's like, I write music that I like. That yep. way, if there's fans that like my music, we like the same thing. We like the same, right. You know, so it's just, it's it's so cool just to see that the corruption of money and fame and everything Doesn't has not, does, you know, has not overtaken the people that, you know, maybe it should have or could have. Yeah, yeah, and, um, definitely. You know, especially with, um, you know, the idea that, you know, Hollywood can get very deep and the idea of that it's like, hey, all you got to do is just do this thing. You know, and it's like, it's like, no, nah. it's like, no, nah, man, I'm good. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm all right. You know, and it's so I'm, I'm really happy we got to do this. Um, so if you've made it this far into uh, this podcast, um, number one, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, just listening to two guys talk about <laughs> just the cool, you know, people of, of Hollywood. Yeah. Um, and also you're going to get the uh, little teaser here to know that Brendan Frazier is the one person we didn't get to talk about tonight. But he'll have his own. He is going to have his own episode <laughs> because we have way too much to say about him. It could not be condensed, and it would not be right if we only kept him to about 15 minutes. He deserves yeah. a, a full episode that we get to praise him and just celebrate what things are leading he to. He is definitely one of the good guys. And I think that I... I think I got to say, I'm probably going to become dedicated into watching his new shows and movies that are coming out because they look really awesome. And I am super excited for just the people that want to create art because they love doing it. Because I know that that's what I do. I know that's oh, what yeah. you do. Oh, yeah. And this was just awesome to finally do something like this is the idea of we've been wanting, we've been wanting to talk about these guys for a yeah. while and we do what we love because we love it. And we don't do topics that we're not interested in or that, you know, we're like, Oh, like whatever. Like, it's just like, you know, every, every episode or everything we do is because we enjoy it mm -hmm. and we enjoy just pumping these people up and knowing that, they genuinely give a shit. Yeah. And we're excited to just show that and not let it go unnoticed. So with that being said, if you've made it this far, thank you. Subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. And uh, Eric, do you have any, anything else you want to no. let the people know about? Maybe that's what's going on in your life or the normal things or what, like, what's your favorite food? You got anything that you're uh, enjoying right now? Any, any, uh, any good food? Any good, uh, you know, like, you know. Just, you know, uh, rice meat. and chicken, <laughs> rice and chicken, my friends, you've heard it here first on the cave cast rice and chicken is the best thing that you can eat. Cause you can put any sauces that you That's want. Right. We've learned a lot. Thank you guys for hanging out with us and just listen to us. Just bombard you with our words about just the positivity that we can throw at you. So thank you guys so much. And we will see you guys on the next one. Adios. Fuck yeah. <laughs>